Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to the LIC Housing Finance Q3 FY23 Earnings Conference Call hosted by Access Capital Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, Please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Praveen Agarwal from Access Capital. Thank you and over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Lizan. Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to this earning call. Uh, we have with us Mr. Y. Vishwanath Gaurd, MD and CEO, uh, Mr. Ashwini Gai, uh, Chief Operating Officer, and Mr. Pudipto, CFO. I would request Mr. Gaurd to share his initial remarks on the results, post which will open the floor for Q&A. Uh, over to you, Mr. Gaurd. Okay. Thank you, Pravin. Thank you. Very good morning to all of you. Uh, I extend a hearty welcome to every one of you to the post-earnings conference call of LIC Housing Finance Limited. As you are aware, LIC HFL declared its Q3 FI 23 results yesterday. Prior to detailing the operational aspects, I would like to highlight that the current fiscal year, RBI had increased the report rate by 225 basis points in five consecutive MPC meetings in line with the monetary policy tightening across the world due to inflationary pressure. Consequently, the company also raised its LHPLR by 210 basis points in the current fiscal year till date. The financial high rates of this, of this quarter as follows. Total revenue from operations, 5,871 crore, as well as 5,054 crore for the corresponding quarter of the previous year, showing a growth of 16%. Outstanding loan portfolio stood at 2,68,444 crore, as well as 243,412 crore, as on 31 December 2021, reflecting a growth of 10%, out of which the individual home loan portfolio reported a growth of 14%, and now it is comprising of 83% of total portfolio. It is up from 80% one year ago. Then the total disbursement for the quarter was 16,100 crore, as against 17,770 crore per Q3 of FI22. Out of that, disbursements in the individual home loans were 13,580 crore, as against 15,341 crore per Q3 of FI22. Whereas the project loans were 427 crore, as compared to 293 crore for the same quarter in the previous year. It is up by 46%. On the net interest income front, the NII was 1,606 crore for the quarter, as against 1,455 crore for Q3 of FI22, with a growth of 10%. The net interest margin for this quarter has been stable at 2.42%, as against 2.42 for Q3 of FI22. Profit before tax for the quarter should at 593.01 crore as against 961.85 crore, a decline of 38%. Profit after tax for the quarter should at 480.30 crore as against 767.33 crore for the same period previous year with a decline of 37%. In terms of asset quality, stage 3 exposure at default should at 4.75% as against 5.04% as on 31st December 2021 and 4.9% as at the end of September 2022. This quarter, our focus was on margin improvement and asset quality. As you would note, there is, a, there is an increase quarter after quarter in NIMS from 1.8% to 2.42%, bringing us back to the Q3 of FI22 levels. This has come on the back of better liability management and passing on the increase of PLR by 115 basis points in Q2, which are effect from Q3. A further 35 basis points hike was affected in December 22, which is effective from January 1st of this quarter. 
the other focus area was on asset quality wherein we have seen stable numbers with a small quarter over quarter decline the asset quality trend is looking positive and improving so we are very much positive on that you would note that this quarter we have made higher provisioning to the tune of over 760 crore this has been made to increase the overall pcr substantially the stage 3 pcr now stands at 50.8% it is up from 43.6% one quarter back and significantly higher than the december 21 where it stood at around 39.7% it is in line with the company's objective of strengthening the balance sheet last few months there have been successive repo rate hikes by the rbi due to which the home loan rates have also increased across the industry though this has a slight impact in slowing incremental business our individual home loan book continued to show growth of 14% by and large in line with our expectation the disbursement for the 9 month period registered a growth of 13% overall and also 13% in the retail category on the funding side we have witnessed an increase in the cost of funds which stood at 7.4% as compared to 7.1% in q2 of fi23 and 6.69% as on q3 of fi22 it is attributable mainly to the total cumulative repo rate hike of 225 basis points by rbi in the current fiscal and increase in other benchmark rates like t bills and gsec etc incremental cost of funds also inched up and stood and it stood at 7.61% for q3 of fi23 the further interest rate trajectory will be largely governed by the ensuing rbi state policy with this brief introduction i would like to invite you for your queries thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen we will now begin with the question and answer session anyone wishing to ask a question let's start in one on either tone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and two participants are requested to use handset while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles The first question is from the line of Maruk Adesanya from Nova. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, so my first question is on the provisioning figure. Uh, so uh, does that include any write-off or it's all provisions only? Hello. Uh, members of the management team hello uh, members of the management team are you able to hear us ladies and gentlemen we seem to have lost the audio from the management's line please stay connected while we try to regain the audio is okay now we are correct now hello yes sir are you able to hear us yes sir. yeah yeah we are on we are on in only okay sir uh Please yes, madam. I think we answered her. No, we told that there is no, no. right up. Uh, I'm so sorry, sir. We were unable to hear you all. No, there are no right ups, Malik. Okay, and uh, just in terms of your gross, was there any slippage from restructured loans this quarter? No, the restructured slippage, as we mentioned earlier, also it is in line with around 15 percent, which has been there. so that is uh, consistent for the last three or four quarters okay but overall there has been a reduction slight reduction is there overall in the restructured slip which you know yes okay thank thank you thank you ma'am thank you we'll move on to the next question that is from the line of abhijit tibriwal from motila lotwal please go ahead Uh, yes. Uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you for taking my question. So, I think I mean coming back to uh, this this credit course that we took during the quarter. I um, just wanted to understand within your opening remarks, you had suggested that this was in line with the company's objective of increasing the strength of the balance sheet. So, 
just trying to understand this a little better from from what we've known all along is that the provisioning is usually driven by an ECL model. So, I mean, has there been a significant increase in the risk that we foresee that has led to an increase in PCR by about seven percentage points on a sequential basis? Or, or, or let's say you are anticipating higher slippages from the structured pool uh, over the next six months when those moratoriums in your corporate book get over. So that's my first question. Achha, okay. Uh, one thing uh, here I would like to say is that ECL and all, okay, we're having a policy, we follow it. And here what happened, as I mentioned also, to strengthen the balance sheet, one thing. And uh, actually, the management overlay, what happened even other day also, we uh, actually, um, uh, even last time also telling you, what happened, the PCR ratio, we'd like to actually bring it up compared to earlier years. Now it is around more than 50%. That is the only intention with that. We have increased the, what you call the, our uh, provisioning. And then PCR is now, it is in line with the industry now. Got it, sir. So at least, sir, at least can you take that comfort that now that you've increased it to, let's say, 51%, percent you are going to maintain at these levels and we will not see the kind of volatility in state yes, three yes, yes. provisioning coverage? Which... Sure, sure, sir. Sure. This will be maintained, yeah. Sir. All right, sir. All right, sir. So the second question I had was, was on prepayments. I mean, at least your, your slide 11 of the presentation says that the prepayment rate was about 9.3% for the nine months, which I would say is significantly lower than about 10.5 to 11% uh, that we've seen in the past. So have, has there, what we also said in the last quarter, has there been significant outreach in terms of retaining customers, giving out certain incentives for to them to retain customers, which has kind of led to a, a, a lower prepayment number in this nine months? No, as far as the, uh, the incentive, etc., there was no incentive or anything of this sort in this quarter. But overall, uh, the, uh, the prepayment rates have uh, come down because of probably a tightening liquidity outside. Okay, one more thing, market also, what happened, rates are increasing, no, in the sense, yes. increasing scenario, switchovers normally, what do you call, no, will not be that much in the market. Then naturally, they show a downward trend. Got it, sir. Sir, I have one last data keeping question. Uh, I mean, if, if you can just uh, spell out for the limited of all of us, the restructured book, which is outstanding as on December 22, the third quarter, and if you could also split that into corporate and retail and also tell us when will the moratoriums get over and typically what you share in the earnings call a split of your uh, state three this is the four product segments okay figures will give it to you yes uh, otr you want it otr for december outstanding is 1420 crores out of which the project is around 250 crores and the retail is 1169 crores and so when will water coins get over? It is 1,420 crores. I'll, I'll share with you the uh, timeline. Uh, 600 crores will come out in the month uh, of March. And uh, again, another 600 will come out in the next quarter. And the residual will be in the last uh, uh, September, which is just a few hundred crores. So, and so then uh, split of state three, which is the four product segments. Uh, in the stage three, as far as the uh, uh, the categories are concerned, the IHL stage three, uh, it, this is all in data, right? So it is 1.62. For the non-housing individual, it is 6.74. For the non-housing corporate, it's 22.5. So the total retail is now 2.99, and the project is 45.6. So this is useful. So then this one last question overall overall is 4.75. 4.75. One, one last thing here. In your presentation, you spell out what is the provisions that we are maintaining on those IREC NPAs. Basically, things which are uh, our NPA as per RBA circular, but are classified under stage one and stage two. So if you could also give what is the quantum uh, or the pool on which you have maintained these provisions. Yeah, this is a hand, but I'll give it, give it to you. All right, sir. Thank you so much and all the very best. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Abhijit.
Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vivek Ramakrishnan from DSP Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, my question was on the NPA uh, coverage, which it, which you just mentioned. In terms of loan to value of the NPAs, how much would you have in the sense? Is the disposable value will that fifty percent coverage take uh, adequate care of it uh, going forward, or uh, how do you see it going forward in terms of resolution? That's my only question, sir. Thank you. Yes, that is it. See, uh, so here, can you just uh, repeat the last part of your question? Sir, uh, what I wanted to know was you increased the provision coverage to 50%. Now is there enough to you know start resolving yeah, this? Yes, I what you said. Yes, as far as the LTV is concerned, I will take you to uh, some of the, uh, uh, the disclosures made in our presentation. You will find that the LTV at the time of giving the loan itself is around 45 or around 50%. Within that? Uh, within that. So that does not take into account the, the repayments which happen on that account and any improvement in the property prices. So after uh, the SG haircut or the presumed haircut, there is substantial uh, headroom available for full recovery of uh, principal. Correct. That's correct. Sir, thank you very much and good luck, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Omang Shah from Kotak Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Among your line is unmuted. Please go ahead. Uh, Mr. Among Shah, your line is in the talk mode. Please go ahead. As there's no response from the current participant, we'll move on to the next. That is from the line of Nishchin from Kotak. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, just uh, you know, two points. One is, uh, you know, again, on the large provisions that you made this quarter. Uh, you know, is it something which is uh, on any specific assets, uh, or is it is it something that we would have increased coverage at a similar ratio across all the, you know, all the loans? No, it did not against any one specific, not like that. It is our general what you call uh, uh, philosophy of maintaining very good PCR to be in line with the industry. We increased across all. Because in the past, I think we were guided for uh, you know around 50 on sort of basis points of credit cost. And uh, you know, suddenly it went up this quarter. So is it something that uh, you know you would want to kind of accelerate to a particular level, uh, you know, and then take a pause? You know, why is it that you know you could have done it? I mean, you could have probably staggered it maybe over a three-quarter period or something. So you know, just trying to understand, uh, you know, what is it, the, what what was suddenly the reason to do it in this quarter? No, as far as the credit card is concerned, yes, that will be maintained at the same level. In the sense, what happened, the whatever even earlier also I indicated to you, that it will be around 40, 45, no, 40 basis points. That's all correct. Within that range, mostly. 45, this, yeah. 45 to 50 basis points, mostly. Yeah, but this quarter was a higher number, right? So yeah, this was a higher number. Going forward, what is mentioned is that going forward, once we have achieved the by and large stable level of PTR. By and large, after that, it will be uh, in that range. This was with a specific, if you see the actual provisioning required for the purpose uh, of uh, just maintaining the earlier ratio at 40, uh, just one quarter back, it was around 44%. So if you had to maintain it at around 44%, the provisioning required would have translated to a 45 basis point credit cost. But there is a specific, inter, uh, specific objective to increase the PCR beyond that level. So from 43 or 44 percent PCR, which was there earlier, it has now moved to uh, upside of 50 percent. So the balance six or six and a half percent, which has been uh, created as an envisioning cover, that has led to the increase in the overall credit cost. Okay. But it's actually, if you just break down the numbers and see how much of credit cost would have translated if we had maintained the earlier PCR, then it would have translated to the same 45 basis points. Please keep in mind that there has been no increase in NPLs. Yes, NPS maintained NPS. In fact, it slightly reduced over the last quarter. No reduction. That, that, that's true. Uh, on the disbursement side, you know, in the individual segment, we have seen some decline. I think on the year on year basis, it's closer to around 10%, 11%. So, how should we kind of think of it? Is it something that the best phase in terms of real estate growth is behind us? Or is it just a base effect? And, you know, what kind of a growth would we really see in individual disbursements going forward? 
actually the uh, the the in the q3 what happened initial month of this october and november there was small small like here and there some some sort of reduction was there in some region that's why we could not score well in those two months but december one gave good philip also with that it was almost all brought up a good state so what happened now that reduction also what happened because rate interest rate, uh, rate hikes also were there some temporary setbacks were there apart from that because of this now in the q4 normally uh in entire uh, what you call no across all regions lot of what you call no momentum will be there and traction will be seen across all the regions at the highest speed so with that what happened we are very sure that this q4 will be the far far better and we are still we are still what you call no very positive on our q4 performance and we will show more than i think 12 to 13% growth will be there in our volumes of this first month in the quarter on annual on a year on year basis okay. yes here on year basis here on year basis also the 13 percent will be maintained that very very we are highly positive about that because the basic sales of fourth quarter is very high so yeah already what happened you because uh, things are going on very well and then good demand is there even the even the recent budget announcements everything put in place a very good what you call no philip for all these things sure got it thank you very much Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dhawal from DFP. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, sir. Just uh, one question uh, relating to the uh, credit cost. So, uh, uh, so Sudip, you mentioned that uh, a large part of the credit cost went into achieving a particular target uh, provision coverage. Have yes. we completed that journey, or still there is few percentage points of uh, coverage increase expected uh, uh, post which it should uh, normalize? Uh, if you could just clarify that point. Thanks. Now, by and large, now we are almost well nearing to that. Correct. Right? It almost all what we what we do thought actually 51 more than 50 percent we wanted to keep that that PCR to be what we call now uh, to have very good uh, even to be in line with the industry that's the main thing that's why we provide for that I think now as things stand now I think we don't see any further increase required maybe in this one so sir from 4Q 20 Uh, three onwards, uh, should we go back to the 40 to 50 basis point credit cost zone? Uh, is that uh, fairly clear, or uh, is there any other uh, one-off or any such uh, element that will uh, come in the fourth quarter? As as uh, MD sir mentioned, he, it is uh, now normalized. You got it. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bhavik Dave from Nepal India Mutual Fund. Yeah, hi. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, most like, my question was very similar to the previous participant. Just to understand, just to clarify again, the provisioning that we set up on stage one and stage two is also adequate of what we think uh, for the future, right? Like five basis point for stage one and six point four percent that we have for stage two. Uh, the number should be in that range. Uh, we don't intend to increase that materially and keep the State which we're aiming at around 51, like about 50 percent. Is that the way to think about it? By and large, it will be there, like that. All right. And uh, second question is uh, on your uh, employee front. Is there anything that is pending in the sense of wage provision or any any uh, cost that can come up in terms of uh, employee expense that can surprise uh, on the higher side? No, no, no. As it is, nothing is there. What happened normally, you know, last time, last year probably would have seen that for once in a four year meeting. But now we are making it provision for every quarter, so that it is normalized now. So one of things will be there. Also. Understood. And last question, which are a very small uh, observation in the sense that commercial paper borrowing for the quarter has increased on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. I understand that we used to be at four and a half, five percent even pre-COVID. Uh, this time around, we've increased it, considering the kind of rates that that are in the offerings in, in terms of the shorter end. Uh, what led to uh, for us to increase shorter end borrowing, wherein the the cost is 150 to 200 basis point higher? Just a thought there. See, actually, as far as the overall CP exposure is concerned, I think this is one of the lowest across all NBFCs and HSCs. Yes. We time it depending upon the kind of liquidity requirement and also keeping in mind the kind of interest rate uh, view that we hold. Sure. 
understood and uh, last question is uh, what do we are uh, increment is based on like and also when you not speaking on the podcast you it's causing a lot of issues hello yes, yeah i am trying to understand what do we are increment is spends spreads on home loans the increment is spreads on home loans will be around 120 25 basis points sure thank you thank you The next question is from the line of Harsh Vardhan Agarwal from IDFC AMC. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. So, just wanted to understand uh, that a restructured book has come out by around six thousand crores or six thousand two hundred crores in the last nine months. So, how much of that has actually slipped into stage three? Around fifteen percent. Okay, so fifteen percent is of that six thousand two hundred crores per number. Yeah. Okay, and the and the remaining remaining book that. That has been graduated to stage one, or it still remains in stage two? No, most of it is in stage one. <coughs> okay, okay, got it. Sure, thanks. Thank you, Lakshmi. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shweta Gupta-Dar from Elara Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir, for the opportunity. So, a couple of questions. Um, did you mention? Uh, Shweta, uh, ma'am, your audio is not clear. Is it better now? Uh, ma'am, it's sounding very soft and muffled. Ah, uh, yeah, I'll try to be a little louder. So I just wanted, ah, uh, so I wanted incremental cost of funds and fees for the Q3 quarter. Incremental cost. Incremental cost of funds is seven point six one for the third quarter. Q3. Yeah, so increase seven point. Yes, I am so. Hello. Pardon, ma'am. Hello. Yeah. How about incremental yield? Incremental yield. Yes. Yeah, incremental incremental yield is uh, approximately uh, uh, slightly more than around nine percent. Slightly more than nine percent. Okay, noted. Yes. So one last question. Uh, have you seen balance transfer out since uh, this particular quarter? How has been the competitive landscape? Thank you. Balance transfers have come down significantly. It has come down significantly. CMP may continue also. So sure, noted, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Manish Jain from Value First Digital Media Private Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. I'm I'm an individual retail investor. So my company name happens to be the Value First Limited. So my question is that. Although there there is one good part about this this quarter result is that last quarter we saw a significant dip in uh, interest income, so that has recovered. So last year that was a big hit. But as a retail investor, my question is that uh, Mr. Jain, sir, your voice is sounding very muffled. We're not able. Okay, can you is it is it okay now? Yeah, fine, fine. fine. It's okay. Okay, so as a retail investor. My question is that uh, a year back, Q3 results were very good. We had a uh, uh, profit of 767 crores bank and uh, EPS of about 15 rupees. But after that, every quarter something or other happens, and then we don't get a good result. Like last quarter, interest income was low. This quarter, impairment is high. So. now this particular impairment i was just doing my calculation that uh, half the pdp more than half the pdp goes in impairment while i was checking some other how do you finance company much lower okay i am talking of a public sector how do you finance company i don't want to name so they have a interest income and their provisioning or impairment is less than 1% of their interest income by in your case it is 12 to 13% of your interest income you have interest income of 5800 crore and 7 of 750 odd crore is provision and interest this completely falls to bottom line so my question is when do we see a consistent 15 to 16 rupees etf quarter after quarter i think for every quarter something happens which falls to bottom Are we going to see same impairment in the in Q4 also? The first seven hundred crore, eight hundred crore is just written off. That gives a very bad name to the company, and 
and that gets reflected in your uh, uh, multiple in your valuation and valuation i'm not even comparing with let's say i will now take name i'm not comparing with hdfc or some private company even you be camping home the valuations are much better so what is inherently wrong with our country i'm long term investor in this country so i i would like to know what is inherently wrong that we are not able to um manage our assets well and provisioning is always very high no what exactly is the query now one thing actually what you are what you are telling me that would be very clear that why we have high provisioning compared to other housing finance companies it is same industry i agree in earlier part so what happened the provisioning ratio what we want to have on our what you call the nps so that was not on the higher side in the sense it is not at a level where the industry level for required that's why this quarter we had to make extra provision only to come up to the level number 1 number 2 last three years one or two quarters what happened of course last quarter income levels were less because what happened the transmission also was taking time and the rbi rates also were increasing and we have got as per our policy what happened now we pass on the rate hikes at the end of the quarter in the sense the effect will come on the first day of the quarter that's the thing that's why there are some sort of inconsistency as the income levels are concerned now we have come up to the index levels of this what do you call pcr i think going forward probably this may not be so acute what is now it is felt and more or less we are so, inching towards our consistency now and so so we, we we are now as far as q4 is concerned almost half the quarter is over so can we expect that q4 results will there will not be any hiccup which we will not and i i mean we'll have a result which will have 15 or 16 rupee cps and interest income and provision interest income will be lower than provision will be lower or again we'll see something or other going wrong in our pnl account so we cannot give any exact guidance of what will be the profit number for q4 that guidance we will not be giving but yes if you look at it qualitatively certainly the the one of provisioning that we had done is actually to strengthen the balance sheet the money doesn't go out anywhere it is just to create an additional buffer so that is uh, in, in a way lending strength to the overall uh, balance sheet and provisioning coverage ratio which is actually a positive uh, uh, i mean move by the company i mean how how come higher higher provisioning is a positive move there is something wrong that's why you have to provision it no no not like that what happened no when nps have to to come up to one level no the provisioning covering ratio I mean, over a over a longer period of time, it should get it should get taken care of, no? Sorry, no, no. It's why it is being done, no, no. Thank you. We'll move on to the next question. That is from the line of Sanket Cheda from D A N Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, Mr. Sanket Cheda, we are not able to hear you. Yeah, today some of the lines are. Mr. Sanket Cheda, as there is no response from the current participant, we'll move on to the next. That is from the line of Puneet Balhani from Nomura. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, two questions. Uh, firstly, on the provisioning bit, you have showed up your buffers, and uh, so since there is you know no write-offs and uh, no decline, there is also decline in NPS. Is it safe to assume that you know, as per the ECL model, the uh, PD and LGD are increased? That is one, and on the second bit, even on your while you have guided, like you know, in like, going ahead, the provision will be lower. Your stage one and stage two cover is also quite low as compared to peers. So, in accordance with your model, will you be needing to shore up that in the future? And you know, accordingly, can we expect some credit costs on you know to cover for uh, that bit? Yeah. No, just to clarify, there has been uh, no write-offs and there has been no change in the PD LGD expectation. Okay. Okay, and on the second bit, sir, on the stage one and stage two, uh, do you expect from uh, the stage one and stage two is also adequate at this point in time? Okay, okay. So uh, in the future, also we'll be ex- expected to you know maintain these levels for stage one and stage two cover around these yeah, levels. Overall, PCR will remain by and large in the range that we have indicated. There could be realignment depending upon where the which uh, bucket moves to which uh, place. Okay, okay. That's it. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. 
The next question is from the line of Shabranshu Mishra from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Good morning. I just wanted to clarify. You said that project loans have a gross rate three of forty-five percent. Is that uh, correct? Yes. Uh, so, sir, how many accounts are there in, uh, now, and uh, what stage of resolution uh, would they be? It would be very helpful if if an IJA put out a stock exchange notification, or you can at least speak on the top five accounts on this call itself, sir, because that seems to be a very big number. Uh, and we can just start off with uh, the number of accounts which are there and uh, the exposure to each without naming. Uh, as we can start, with. thanks. Actually, we cannot give take any specific names, etc. Overall number of accounts uh, in the total project loan portfolio is around 300, roughly around 300. And even for many of them, what I call which are in NPA now, the resolutions are also what we call uh, coming very well. So probably in future there will be good resolution also we are expecting. It is in different stages of resolution. It is difficult to put out a specific timeline with dates and months because some of them are in uh, the NCNT and various other legal uh, matters. But uh, one thing is clear that. Uh, there has no, not been any further additions. Number one, number two is that we are seeing some small resolutions coming. They may not be meaningful at this point in time in terms of uh, the number, but certainly the trend is positive. Right. So, and uh, 300 is the total number of accounts and uh, total number of accounts. Uh, how many are in uh, beyond 90 plus? Page yes? three will be on 140. Yeah, seven. Uh, total, uh, total account has uh, so seven. seven 80, 80, 80, roughly 80, 80, yeah. roughly 80. 80 accounts beyond 90 plus, and how many will be 60 plus, sir? 60 plus, maybe another 20, 30. Sure, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rick and Shah from Credit Suisse. Please go ahead. Um, thank you for the opportunity. Um, two questions. First one, I uh, observed that the number of employees uh, have been declining for last three, four quarters. Uh, so any uh, color if you could share there. And second one was uh, just to confirm uh, the 35 basis point rate hike in December. Uh, have they been passed on to the borrowers or they will be effective from 1st January only? The employees part actually, I know what you're asking, employees. Huh? Number of employees. Yeah, you employ here and there, actually some people, no, normally it happens who are joining, no, some people may leave also, and then again, that is it. But the company but also no. has got a continuous recruitment exercise, which happens at certain periods of time, certain uh, uh, points of time in the year. So maybe in the next couple of quarters, you will see the improvement in numbers. So that is an ongoing process. And it is an annual basis, actually, yeah. every year as it is a yeah, normal some, phenomenon. Some campus-driven uh, recruitment happens at specific times of the year. Already were recruited people also. Ah. Yeah. And that, uh, as far as the, uh, uh, what was your other query, sorry? 35 basis points, points has already been uh, passed on and it is effective from 1st of January. From it is not factored in the Q3 numbers. It will come in the Q4 numbers. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shri Paldoshi from Equitas. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity. Just wanted to ask, what is the provision that we are carrying on the 1400 crore of uh, moratorium book that we have? See, as far as the RBI, uh, RBI uh, uh, requirement of provisioning is concerned, it is 10% of all accounts which are under OTR. So we are carrying 140 crores? Yes. Okay. And we just wanted to understand how much of the original the restructured book is already out of moratorium? Uh, see, the uh, total restructuring was 7,000, slightly more than 7,000 crores. 7,100 crores, which was around 3% of the then portfolio. Out of that, 5,264 has already come out. Around 750 crores of uh, loan accounts have been repaid fully, that is closed. And balance which is yet to come out of moratorium is 1,420. Pending is one on four. Then, like, how have the additional provisions that we were carrying on those accounts? Uh, so, so because now we are only having one forty crore for the existing restart of moratorium account. So, how will we increase the remaining five thousand crore which we were carrying, like on that book that we were carrying? 
can you can you please repeat your voice was a bit unclear yeah so the reduced said 7300 7200 crore was broadly the original restructure book so we would be getting 720 crore of provisions on that uh, uh, broadly just going by that assumption uh, now that book is down to 1400 crore so the provision as you said is down to 140 crore how have you utilized this you know uh, 600 or crore number see actually whatever provisioning was created that has to remain on the book for one year and whatever is loan closed that can be written back provision on the loan closed that can be written back closed only 700 crores no yeah okay sir okay thank you thank you for answering the question thank you the next question is from the line of bajrang bafna from chanidhi securities please go ahead uh yeah uh, sir uh, my question pertains to uh, you know again on the provisioning side uh, the only issue uh, you know that we are facing while uh, you know modeling your uh, business is we don't have any predictability that what sort of provision that you will do you know do you need to uh, spell us very clearly that what is the uh you know guidelines that you are following because you know as per my understanding last three quarters if we see the stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 numbers we are constantly seeing either stable number in stage 3 or an improving number in the stage 1 side despite that we have uh, you know gone the cl provisioning on stage 3 from 40% to 44% last quarter and now close to 51% on stage 3 in q3 so what is that something you know that we we should be you know considering for our uh, you know model building and what sort of roe is those are sustainable in this business because as per my knowledge you know you will never lose 50% uh, you know in the property which is 100% uh, uh, you know has been given as collateral so the expected credit loss you know even in stage 3 can't be 50% so what is that number based on which you are you know deriving this not 40% is not the right number 50% is the right number so some sense on that you know which you could guide us clearly we will be able to predict uh, you know your uh, company's performance clearly in terms of provisions also and in terms of building the roe number right and so forth the valuation it is just an extension of the question which was asked by a participant some time back so we need some predictability of your numbers you know which would help us to uh, you know model the numbers better that's all thank you very much sir So as we have very rightly uh, identified, uh, I mean, uh, in a in a real estate business with the underlying uh, uh, real estate asset, there is very little chance of losing more than fifty percent. But during the period, you have to create some buffer because so the realization will come. It will come with a with a delay, with a lag. So in the interim, if the if the provisioning cover is specifically retained or increased or maintained at a particular level to give comfort. to the balance sheet for the interim period till the time it is realized so one has to keep that in mind but again coming back to your first observation it is correct that 50% loss after even the distress sell is is very rare that does not happen, uh, generally happen and moreover as a prudent sir as a matter of prudence also we take on this conscious decision okay so we will uh, you know would like to hear that this uh, 50% is an ideal we will not go to let's say 60% Uh, so that is what something that i want to you know get an predictability from you so that we can model it better sir i That's think uh, i think in a years time the way we have increased from 39 uh, or percent to 50 percent that itself says that we are trying to reach a particular level which gives us adequate comfort and it actually insulates the balance sheet from any time of uh, any type of losses which might happen due to delayed realization of the um, uh, stress assets And beyond this limit, of course, may not be that much need at this at this moment. Okay, got it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. A reminder to the participants: anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one. The next question is from the line of Maro Kalijania from Nawama. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. So, in the uh, say last six months, or maybe in the last quarter, so say three to six months, this quarter and the previous quarter, did we have any NPLT related recoveries, and what were the resolution rates? And is there any near term recovery expected from NPLT? Actually, madam, in the NPLT, I think uh, three cases. 
three cases are the, there in the resolution which uh, going on yes. we have received some uh, positive orders it is in the in the stage of uh, realization or implementation you can say so there is no there was nothing resolved in the last 3 to 6 months it's only yes. ongoing just now three orders for implementation okay and what is the resolution rate there roughly resolution rate means as in that of your loan how much would you have recovered or of your outstanding how much would you the order says how much will you recover acha you mean to say in the percentage of terms no yes yes sir. okay okay how many depends on the resolution because what happened uh, uh, the exact uh, it is difficult to give a number but uh, there is a uh, about a 100 to 150 crores work which is coming uh, i mean which is uh, likely <laughs> got it and on an exposure of how much that exposure is right now i'm not able to give you but it's uh, the realizable uh, amount is around 120 to 150 crores See, in some cases it may be even more than no it is close to the full amount or sometimes yes. less also the average amount. different accounts this is not one account several accounts okay thanks Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chintan Shah from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. So, sir, sorry to just stretch on the provisioning part. So, considering that we have uh, made now 50% of provisioning, and uh, once the restructured portfolio is entirely uh, out of uh, restructuring and uh, post the one-year passage, so can we also expect any provision write back from the same, or uh, how would we be treating those provisions? Yeah, now I think seven hundred crores cut close, no? As far as only fifty crores has been repaid and fully closed, closed. So yeah, after no, I mean right back, no? After. Okay, so that that is already been re, uh, written back, right? Ten percent down. Okay, and so for just one more part. So on the provisioning part, so now I think we can now assume that uh, already we have fifty percent of PCR. So now probably we want to start with the clean set, and now the uh, focus, uh, focus to largely be on the uh, growth part, and uh, no uh, baggage of uh, any uh, older uh, provisioning would come in future, right? This is what we can expect. Yes, 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 yes. As things stand now, no call. It is online. So, so that is from my. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Sohil Rozani from S V Rozani. Please go ahead. Hello. Welcome, sir. So yeah. I just wanted to, well, I just wanted to know how is the future prospects with regard to this? Because being interest rate being rising since quite a while, and we don't expect any decrease in that. So are we expecting the same demand, or are we expecting a better? Uh, Quarter uh, uh, as in uh, in three four quarters we are expecting a good results or as in good demand with regard to a loan. A yeah, loan, yeah. actually disbursements definitely we are very highly positive. Even in the past also in the interest rate cycles we are doing very well. This quarter actually already with all the things in place and good support we are very much positive that the 13 percent growth will be showing in our our overall what we call disbursements year on year that is certain. See, just to add to uh, uh, what uh, uh, we just shared, just few months before COVID, we were still selling home loans at around nine percent. Today, despite a 225 basis point increase by uh, Reserve Bank on the repo, we are selling at a rate which is less than the rates which was prevalent in 2019 or late 2018. And at that point in time, also the book view. It's only because. The rate of in, uh, interest has gone up very sharply in a very short period of time between May and December. That is around uh, seven uh, seven months or so. That is probably what is uh, temporary uh, creating some kind of a temporary dampener. Yes. But now Q4 uh, we are highly positive. We will be again definitely crossing that uh, our uh, already committed 13 percent growth rate. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants: anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one. Participants, if you wish to ask a question, you may please press star in one. 
If there are no further questions, I now hand the conference over to the management for the closing comments. Thank you all. Really, it was a good interaction. Uh, at the end, I would like to once again thank you for your continued support. And I also assure you that the company is in a very good, consistent growth path. Thank you. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Access Capital, that concludes this conference call. We thank you for joining us. And even now, disconnect your lines. Thank you. Yeah.